Now, when we're designing new views like this trip details view, often what we're doing is we're jumping between preview mode in Bubble Go or in our web browser and the editor. And we're changing things and just then seeing how it looks when we then open up preview again. And this is always gonna be part of the process to some degree, but we can help ourselves out quite a little bit by using here a little feature called the canvas placeholder. And what this canvas placeholder allows you to do is add in some static text that is gonna render here directly with on the canvas so that as you then subsequently make adjustments to the design, you don't have to jump back into Bubble Go or jump back into Web Preview in order to see how it looks. You can just immediately get a feel for it right here within the editor. Now it's not there for every element, this app bar title, for example, doesn't have it, but many of the visual elements that we place on the page do have this canvas placeholder. All you have to do is add some dynamic data. So let's say that this text element is going to show the trip that we're looking at start date, and then we'll format that with the abbreviated month formatting, which is that top option of the two there. Well, you see that now that I've done this, I get this canvas placeholder. So I can add in here some canvas placeholder value that then lets me see right away where the potential issues are in my design. So I'm just gonna go through here using canvas placeholder just to clean up this design a little bit. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to hold down shift and select both of these elements, right click, group them in a column. And this is our group body or sometimes called our group main. And it's on this group body where I'm going to add my obligatory 16 pixels of padding around all my elements so I can remove it from this text summary that I had added. And this is the design that I'm looking to replicate here. So I'm gonna focus on creating this top date area first. And since what we have here is a date icon and some text next to each other, I'm guessing that I'm going to use a nested row layout in order to achieve this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by putting my existing text element here that's displaying the date inside of a row container and I'm going to grab this icon element and place that inside. And immediately I'm gonna change here the color and of course the icon itself. So I'm gonna grab this calendar icon here and then I can see that it is slightly too high up in this group. So I'm going to align it vertically. And then in my row container, maybe I just add a touch of column gap. And I can already see here on the canvas how this is going to look, right? And one of the things that I can see is that the edge of my icon here is not in line with the edge of the other elements, namely the summary and this top bar text. And so what I can do is actually just get rid of the default padding here that's on the edge of this icon. But you can see here how that hasn't quite solved the issue. And so what I can actually do with these icons is as long as my fixed height stays the same, I can actually change the width here. And that is gonna bring in the sides, the border of this icon while keeping the icon size the same. I think I can go a little bit lower than that even, possibly 20 and yeah, that looks close enough for me. Um, getting rid of the minimum height for this group, I wanna shrink it down a little bit. My text element is currently got 44 pixels of minimum height, so that's currently preventing the height of this group from getting any smaller. So I'm going to get rid of that entirely. And then as for my icon, actually still has a little bit of top and bottom padding that we don't need. 
and I can possibly bring this fixed height down a little bit more as well so that it is more or less in line with the text. So I think I'm happy with that. I think everything is very close together here though, the summary and my date area. So I'm gonna add a bit of row gap here. Maybe we'll start with eight, possibly could bump it up to 16. And I think my column gap here is maybe a little bit small as well. And then with this group B, I may just copy this. And this is going to be where I'm going to display the cost of the trip. So we'll change the icon here to possibly these, these little coins. And then in the canvas placeholder, I can already experiment here with some values. Can be sometimes a good idea to just add really large values as well, just to make sure that everything fits and looks well on the page. But this is probably an absurd amount for most of our users. So let's say it's a $2,000 trip and we of course need to change here the dynamic value as well to the cost field. And with a number field, we can always format this as a currency. This is an operator that we have access to that lets us set a few things like if we want to have a thousand separator, which I do, and then what currency are we dealing with? We're just going to add a prefix. And so of course, because we're using Canvas placeholders, I already have some idea about how this is looking. But that certainly doesn't mean that we shouldn't jump into Bubble Go and see it for ourselves. For this particular trip, I've got some very poor test data. So what I might do is just create a new test trip here with some test values and even add in here a summary by recording my voice with this native microphone feature. Had four wonderful days in and around Madrid with the family. Alice got very badly burnt on day one and so she was quite miserable for the majority of the holiday, but got a lot happier in the evenings after a few cervezas. See here that my Spanish pronunciation could be improved. So this is a test trip and we can see here how this looks on Bubble Go as well. And I'm quite happy with that as our starting point. Now in the next lesson, we're gonna learn about some simple operators that we can use to manipulate data, like subtracting dates from each other and doing basic mathematical operators.